Hello everyone. It's James again. And today I want to talk about the cover takeover of the West. And when I say the West. That can mean pretty much any Western style country. Now when you look at this takeover that has been happening for a very long time now. You have to look at covert narcissistic abuse. Because they are one in the same. But first I want to digress a moment. There have been many people over the last 80 to almost 100 years talking about how to take over people easily. And they talk about getting to the children through the educational system. So they aren't trained in skills they are good at. But so they are trained how to work for the system. And in this process they indoctrinate them how to think in the world view of the criminals that are running this agenda. And there have been many that say. You just need to keep on repeating this process for generation after generation. And eventually what they are trying to do. And the evil they are trying to spread will finally stick. And make its mark on society. There was someone that said. And his name escapes me that instead of a physical war. Like dropping bombs. It's much better to take over a people through covert means such as getting people to think and be how you want them to be which will eventually lead to their own downfall. Now, think about covert narcissism for a moment. The goal of the covert narcissist, and most narcissists in general is for other people to take the blame for the evil they do. Here's an example. You have a narcissist parent or parents that ruin a child's life. Now this narcissist parent or parent is elderly needing care from their child. They might have turned into a narcissist. Let's say there are two children. The scapegoat and the golden child. Let's say the scapegoat got help. Figured things out. Moved several states away. And has literally no contact with their family of origin. However, the golden child is still in the middle of all the events going on in the narcissist parent or parent's life. Now when these life circumstances hit. Believe it or not, the golden child will now in many instances replace and take the role of the scapegoat. And let's say this now narcissist child of these narcissist parents are a lot less than helpful to them in their elderly lives. Because the simple fact they are a narcissist. And guess who created them to be that way. But that's not what society sees. What society sees is this awful child now adult that refuses to stand up and do what's right and help out his or her elderly parents. Basically. This child now adult. Is taking all the blame. And I do mean all of it. For the sins and evil of what their parent or parents have done to them. There's literally no explaining that can be done. That will be able to get him or her out of such societal blame. Now let's reverse things a bit. Let's say, both of the children grew up in such a toxic home. But their parent or parents were drug addicts that beat them as children. And everyone knew what was going on. Now let's say, the children, both of them grew up to get help and became as well adjusted as one could be. But let's say they still kind of lived around in their original area. And let's say their abusive parent or parents needed help because they were elderly and their health was failing. If either one of these children or let's say both didn't offer to help. Anyone that knew the family growing up would have no problem with these children walking away not to help their parent or parents. And people that might come into contact with these elderly people might tell them. The reason why your children aren't there for you is because you abused them so badly. Now do you see the difference there? On the one hand. Overt physical abuse is used. And other overt toxic situations are a factor that everyone can see. And everyone sides with the victim. And the abuser is seen for what they are. An abuser. Kind of like someone using real deal warfare. Then you have another parent or parent. Using year after year of manipulation. Lying. Gaslighting. Scapegoating. And brainwashing. And they end up getting their end goal along with having literally zero blame for all of the evil they've done. And the sick part is, this blame they should be getting, but aren't, has been transferred to the victim to carry for the rest of his or her life. 
and those that are doing all of the stuff to us that is being done in the world. Especially in the West. They know this. They have been running all kinds of mind games on the masses to the point. When the good people stand up to point out what is going on. They end up looking like the real bad guys or girls. When the real evil ones sit back with their popcorn to enjoy the show. Now let's look at this deeper. And I want you to really and I really mean wrap your minds around what I'm about ready to say. And before I do this. Don't get excited and start blaming this person or that person. Because this jumping around attitude will make it hard for you to process what I'm saying. Most of the United States is owned by outside forces. No matter it be real estate. Commercial or business. All the way down to the entertainment industry and the media. Now before you hit your keyboards with comments. There are several. Or at least a handful of outside countries that have money to burn. That have invested in purchasing. Up all of these things in the West. Now the first question I have is. If I can't go to let's say one of these countries that own so much here. And buy up their resources because of their laws and regulations. Why are they allowed to buy up our resources when they don't even live here? And there's nothing negative about what I'm asking. I'm just asking the question why. Then you have to ask yourself. Why has it been in the last several decades the moral fabric of the West went from hard working and family oriented? And yes. There were families back then that had their own problems with abuse and narcissism. But there were families that didn't and were normal. But why did we go from as a society to being known as hard working? And family oriented? To a completely morally bankrupt hot mess? Now several decades ago. In one of Anton Levy's many interviews. And if you don't know who that is. He was the leader of the Church of Satan. He talked about pretty much how Satanists were entrenched in all walks of life. And that in a certain amount of years. Everyone would become some sort of deviant or they would have some sort of perversion. And he was talking about this as if it was the grand plan that was going to unfold. Now you look at that. And you look at the fact. That many of the countries that are in direct competition with Western countries like the United States. These countries own a vast amount of the United States. Now you have to ask yourself. Why would they have it in their hearts to feed you and me and others with a steady diet of things in our life that will make us thrive and become better? The fact to do so isn't in their best interest. So you have all of these outside powers that own us. Or a vast majority of us. And then you have those that are in our midst that are twisted and evil that help these outside powers achieve their goals. By taking these high-ranking official positions in our society to do the bidding of those that own us. All with a smile on their face. Like the covered narcissist pretending they really love the people when they don't. So. How is this all done? You over time change society's rules. Here's the thing. There's going to be instances where there are those that were born before these changes. That look at what's going on. And shake their head. And say. Wow that's nuts. And they might try to instill in others or at least their family good morals and values. But. Those that are doing this horrible covered abuse and take over to us. They know that eventually these people will fade away and die. And they figure that if they keep at their agenda decade after decade. They can get it to the point where all of the old morals aren't known by the children. And what the children are brought up on is nothing but narcissism. Evil. And moral decay. Let's look at the free love movement. Just a decade before. Things were a bit more conservative. No it wasn't perfect. There were divorces and cheating on both sides. But divorces had a negative public stigma. So they didn't happen as much. A woman getting pregnant outside of marriage was another big societal no-no. A woman that was pregnant without a husband stuck out like a sore thumb back then. It was very uncommon. Cheating did happen. But because the consequences in society were a bit more severe. And because the opportunity wasn't as widely available as it is now. Because of the internet. 
it was quite a bit less. Now I want to digress for a moment. Because though it was less. I don't want to make you think it was perfect. There is a reason why back then people used to joke about one of the children in a family being the milkman's child. Or the repairman's child. Or the postman's child. Because those things really happened. And it's important to note. That no fault divorces. And awarding majority of the money to the women if such a divorce took place. Wasn't just because men were cheating on their wives with their secretaries. Which again did occur. But no fault divorces. And this is very important to this discussion later on. No fault divorces also came into play because of men coming home from war to find their wife pregnant by another man. Now just like today. If the timing was close enough. They would try to get their husband to perform their marital duties so they can say they just conceived and the child is the husband's. But in some of the cases. The timing was way off. And there were some men that stuck around and raised the child. However. There were many that left and divorced such a woman. You have to understand. Birth control wasn't as good or widely available as it is today. And a woman being with a man back then could easily result in these things happening. That's why both men and women had to really make sure the person they were with was the person they wanted. To be with. Was it perfect? No. But it kept society together. And was there cheaters on both sides? Yes. But I dare say it's probably 100% worse today than it was back then. But keep that in mind. For the rest of this discussion. That no-fault divorces weren't just made up to protect women from a cheating abusive man. But it was also there to wrongly protect a woman in case she cheated on a man and got pregnant. Because let's say the man is off at war. And the woman meets some scumbag guy. Or it was a repair man. Or whatever. All she has to say is she doesn't know who the man is. And if the husband returns from war. And finds his wife pregnant. He just can't up and leave so easily. He can't even cite in the divorce he was cheated on. And even if he does it has no bearing on the case. So this is how many men were turned into a cuckold. Because many men realized leaving was too costly. And that it was better to stay. And save face and keep up the lie that the child that looked nothing like them was. Was somehow his child. People. These are the first steps in our covert takeover. Just like the narcissist in our life. They didn't do it all at once. They did a little here and a little bit there over the course of several years. All covertly and all with keeping their hands clean of blame. Now was everyone caught up in this mess at this time? No. You still had old values. Women trying to teach other women how to be proper women. And men trying to teach men how to be proper men. Then out of nowhere the free love movement. And everyone just thought it was something for hippies. Not mainstream society. Again this is how it's introduced. And during all of this. You still had the elder generations shaking their head when they would watch the hippies on television. Or they would watch one of their interviews given on television. And by and large at this point. You still had very family oriented television shows. But those that run things knew. Again like I mentioned. At some point. Those that held these traditional values would at some point die off. And as this was happening. They slowly started to change up what was shown on television and what was being promoted in music. To the point where it was along the same lines as the earlier free love movement. Just more modern and mainstream. You had people that later admitted to working with or for certain agencies within the highest levels that promoted single motherhood. And that you could hook up with whoever you want and that you would still be celebrated as a person and parent. They preached the lie that all men were evil. Which was designed to create a gap between men and women. Then you started to see these no-fault divorces pick up steam. Here's the thing a lot of women don't like to hear. Because though there are just as many bad men as there are women. The elites chose to go after you women for a reason. There have been several studies done. 
and many people here on YouTube and the web in general that have talked about. There is a direct link between the number of men that a woman has been with and her inability to bond and love a man in her life. Now just for the record this can affect men too. But it's been found that it greatly. And I do mean greatly affects women. We've talked about before regarding the high we get when we are love bombed by a narcissist. And when the narcissist flips the script on us and starts to devalue us. We might be caught in a mode where we are chasing that high we got when we first met them. And this is what can keep us in this dangerous loop many of us have been in with such a toxic person. But on the flip side of that. It's been found that when a woman is with the first man she's ever been with. Let's say a man she loves. She will tingle from head to toe with excitement from this man. But then let's say. She takes a trip to Las Vegas with her girlfriends. And she gets sucked. Into behaving like her girlfriends and she cheats on her boyfriend or husband. Not just with one man. But two different men during this trip. Now she's initiated into the secret girls club with her friends. And she comes back to her husband or boyfriend. And that spark she felt with him. She doesn't feel anymore. So she runs off to chase it again and again. So she cheats with a co-worker. She cheats with a man she met at a bar on a so-called innocent girls night out trip. And as time goes on she dies inside. She has become immune to this dopamine hit that is given to her by being with a man. To the point she has no way to bond to a man at all. And those that know about these facts. You factor into things. Like a piece of the puzzle that was set so long ago. And that's called. No fault divorces. And now you have a society in utter chaos. While the puppet masters sit back and watch the destruction of a society go on. Now what happens with the men? This is actually heaven for evil men. How so? Let me tell you. There is a reason why majority of good men don't want their women hanging out with co-workers after work and coming straight home. There's a reason why they don't want them to take so-called innocent ladies only trips. Or girls night out to dance at the bar or nightclub. Because they know there are millions and I do mean millions of scumbag men that will have no problem at all spending quality time with your wife or girlfriend. Now it's important to note. On both sides. There are times where a man or woman might not know the person they are dating is taken. But there are many that do and don't care. I've talked to men that say. Hey. If his wife wants to play who am I to say no. Or hey they are just dating. It's not like they are married. So she's fair game. I've seen it time and time again. Where a man I've worked with had no problems at all spending quality time let's say with a married or otherwise taken woman. Such as a woman that had a serious boyfriend. I tried to tell one of these guys. You don't know what you're doing. Maybe they've been dating for six or seven years. And they've built a life together. And you're going to ruin it on some lame saying that she's not married. Maybe they have children and their relationship ends because of this. Now you're making it so a child grows up in a situation where the father is no longer in the house. And they said. You're right James. But she's the one flirting. Who am I to say no? And this woman that is flirting with this man more than likely has gone through the sick motions of our society and is in the process I just talked about. Chasing that high she felt when she first met her boyfriend. But lost it the first time she cheated. And is now chasing that high with co-worker number one. And trust me there's always a scumbag that will want to spend time with your wife. And again. That's why it was important to slowly and covertly change societal norms. Such as a true lady would not allow another man into her home unless her grown son or husband was there. And it was something official like a repair situation and there was a family member to make sure things were on the up and up. Because otherwise neighbors would talk. I saw so and so going in Mary Jo's house and Bill wasn't home. That's not a good look. So this needed to change. And it all started with this counterculture free love movement. Knowing those that had traditional values would die off. And slowly changing the music. 
movies, and television to make this free love movement more normalized and mainstream. And if a man says, Look, I don't want you hanging out with these co-workers after you're done with your shift. He's now controlling. However, several years ago, it was seen as normal to make such a request. I have news for you. Being able to tell your wife no to things is the reason why many of those old marriages were for a lifetime. High school sweethearts that married and stayed together for life. There was none of this what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Now again was it perfect as we discussed at the beginning of this video? No. But it was more controlled and better. Now the main problem back then as I've stated in other videos. Is the lack of knowledge of narcissism in the family. There was this thing of you can't speak against your family. Which was perfect for the covert narcissist parent or parents. And they used pretty much the playbook the elites are using on us now. To over time ruin their children's lives all without taking blame. Now the problem with all of what I've talked about is. You have the wrong type of men having access to majority of the women because they've gotten to a place where they don't care at all. And I'm sad to say. Most of the women have been conditioned to the point where they don't have the ability to bond well based on what I just mentioned. So the end result is a society in utter chaos. And children the elite can mold. And homes that started out well. Ending up in breakup and disaster with children caught in the middle. Those that buy us up do so for a reason. They don't have our best interests at heart. And getting us to destroy ourselves is their number one goal. All with keeping their hands clean from blame. Something I've mentioned before. No matter if you have a man or woman on a talk show talking about these relationship dynamics and dysfunctions. Instead of being listened to. And their points considered. They are automatically attacked to make it seem like their points are laughable. Funny. And utterly nuts. But when you have someone on such a show. That talk about the benefits of cheating on your husband. And why cheating saved my marriage. They are embraced and welcomed and cheered. Look. If any of you have ever worked for a big company. You have probably seen strange policies and procedures implemented. And if you are real and speak up and say. You know. That doesn't seem right and will actually make our productivity slower. You will end up with a target on your back. And before you know it. You will be covertly set up and fired. Or forced to quit. So a lot of bosses and managers in such companies will do whatever they have to do to keep their job. They will agree to whatever nutty policies they have to agree with and set up innocent co-workers to be fired if they are told to do so. What makes you think those that work? And I stress the word work. In Hollywood are any different. And Hollywood isn't just owned by a certain group. There are other wealthy countries outside of the United States that own big pieces of the media and Hollywood. And if they want to covertly push an agenda. Those that work in such an industry will toe the line because if they don't they know they will be covertly fired or forced to quit like any other job in the western world. And over time these people we see acting this way on television or other media interviews. Are gravitating to these positions because they are truly evil. And all of the good people were either forced out or left willingly. You have to ask yourself. Why do some people in Hollywood that appear to have it all. Just suddenly drop out of sight and buy a farm somewhere. Or go back to school to become something else other than an actor. Or to open up a car lot. Because these people know working in Hollywood is working for a corrupt system and they no longer can be a part of such evil. There was a woman a while back that was making some really evil music. But she tried to sue her way out of her contract because she couldn't take singing the evil music she was being forced to sing that she obviously didn't write. But she was forced to stay in her contract unless she could pay up to get out. Again. Some of these people do enjoy what they are doing. And others are doing what they are told though it's killing them inside. And all of it is just one puzzle piece at a time to covertly take you and I over. Look we are at the point where walking up to a woman and saying. 
I think your attractive is almost against the law. Yes. I know there are scumbag men that are a bit out of control. But there was a time. Not a perfect time. But a time where women that were attached and that were truly in love with who they were with and bonded to them. Carried themselves in a certain way that said. I'm not available. And this is something that was taught from elder woman to younger woman. And also there were men. Good men that would run to protect such a woman and this type of honor displayed. You see old hypergamy worked and was normal. And they. They meaning the puppet masters replaced it with the evil that is going on now. Let me give you an example. Let's say. Many years ago. You had a young 25 year old single man. That wasn't rich but he was a hard worker. Let's say for the sake of argument. He had some good looks going for himself despite not having a lot of money. But again mind you he was self-supporting. And hard working. Then one day this young man is on his lunch break and gets a coffee and sandwich at a diner across the street from his work. And there is a 20 year old attractive young lady that works there that is the person waiting on him most of the times he goes there. The chemistry is good. She's showing signs she's not attached. And so is he. Before you know it. He's asking her out. He courts her for a while. He marries her. She quits her job. And they develop a life. Now though he's not rich. He's doing better at this time financially than she is. She's physically attracted to him. And she sees quickly they are a good match as they are both attractive people inside and out. He's hard working and does his best to be a good provider and she sees he has the best of intentions towards her and that she can rely upon him. As he provides her with a sense of security. Again this is way back when. So skipping from guy to guy isn't something that would make her look good. And she doesn't have dating apps or Facebook. So this guy is a good match. So she settles down. And so does he. This is normal hypergamy. And it's hypergamy that worked. Because yes. Rich men did have a bit more options. But a guy from the neighborhood still had a chance as long as he was hard working and put his best foot forward. I say this because these types of relationships were the fabric of western society. And they were quite normal. You had the average looking guy with the average looking girl. You had the good looking guy with the good looking girl. You had the unattractive guy with the unattractive girl. And yes hypergamy was involved. But it might be a man that worked let's say at a real basic job. Would be considered a good catch for a woman that worked at a soda shop. What I'm saying was there was someone for everyone. Most people had a chance to find a life partner. And part of our covert destruction is with those that are trying to destroy us by covertly making this type of relationship harder and harder for most people in our society. And though this is happening in the West. I mentioned before that I watched a documentary about China. And because there are so many men in the society. The women can be picky. And they interviewed some men. And they were stressing so hard about getting the best education and job possible. So they could one day have a wife. And that if they weren't able to achieve such goals that their chances of getting a wife would be slim. Then they interviewed some of the women. And they just snickered and laughed. And said they can afford to be picky to find the best man with the most money. And because of this cheating is commonplace there. And something else I learned about that happened in China that's very sad. Men capturing other men's wives. And forcing them to be their wives instead because they are unable to find a wife normally and naturally. Also on the flip side of things. There was many women spending time they shouldn't spend with married men that were rich. That utterly destroyed their wives that were at home. It's just a mess. But that's what happens. You take away the normal ease of men and women being able to connect. And you take away the normal and healthy society rules that keep both men and women in reasonable check. And you attack anyone that speaks the truth and make them seem like the bad guy or bad girl. And there you have a society in complete and utter chaos.
Can you imagine us being able to have relationships like in times past? Minus the horrible and I do mean horrible racism. And with full and socially accepted working knowledge of narcissistic abuse and what it's really all about. Can you imagine? Good people would be able to connect more than we wouldn't. And bad relationships would be abnormal and easy to get away from. Wake up people. Wake up. It's no different than gangs. The social engineers know the more drugs and gangs and horrible acts of violence happens. Eventually it will get to a point where the children won't have the same reason and logic as the elders. However. As for the children. They will become stone-cold killers without feeling or remorse. Well. The goal of the elite is to get women to be the same way towards men. But sadly allows most of the fathering of children to the evil men in our society. Which will breed another generation of evil. And good men and women. We have a hard time meeting. I mean that young 22 year old out there trying to make things work should be able to walk up to a young lady with respect and decency and say. You have a nice smile. And there should be no harm. But it's being taken away. Who's taking it away? And what's their agenda? It's a Trojan horse from those that want to see us go down. Do you know that most women get ruined and their lives turned upside down to this brainwashing to where they are numb? And most men have been left at one point in their life because they didn't have enough money or the woman so called fell out of love. This is by design people. Yes. Evil on both sides. But the elites are looking at sheer numbers. And doing what they are doing is the best bang for their buck. Wake up. Please wake up. Please pass this video to as many people as you can. So as many people as possible have a chance to step back and see the big picture of what is going on. Well that's all I have for now. I hope everyone had a blessed day. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.